Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today, yes, we're going to paint that crimson first before somebody knocks down my door <laughs> and starts stealing my recipes. Uh, the Crimson Fists are probably one of the coolest successor chapters there are. Uh, they've got their own, you know, a paint for them. They've got their own leader miniature, their own rules and stuff. They're cool. You gotta love Crimson Fists. And one of the easy parts about painting them is this nice deep blue armor, which we're going to tackle now. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Have a look at what we're going to use and get some brushes out. Now I'm going to list the names for all of the paints in the description so we can save some time. We'll just get straight into it. I'm going to get just a fractional amount of water in my brush. I don't want very much at all. Uh, these big brace brushes, they suck the paint up something good. <laughs> Same with the water. Now Cantor Blue is named for the current chapter master of the Crimson Fist, so I'll give you a wild stab where we're going to start. Over a Chaos Black undercoat, just start bucketing this on. You'll see, because I have got it maybe a little too wet, uh, I'm getting some areas where that undercoat is showing through, a little bit streaky, but not to worry. What I'm going to do, let that dry, and we'll come back and do a second thin coat over the top. You do not have to be careful with this at all, okay? Everything else that we're sort of accidentally hitting as we go along here, we're going to paint a different color anyway. So just get this on. And like I said, if you do need a second coat, leave this to dry for about 10 minutes, then we'll come back and do a second. You can see once the second coat is dried, how much smoother that blue is. It's quite nice. Now I've got here Ethereum blue and we're going to dry brush them. You could use something like Cronus Blue if you wanted a slightly less sharp transition of color, but once we shade it, it's not going to be so noticeable anyway. So what we'll do is once I've got my brush set up, let's just dry brush the edge of his base and see how much we're going to leave behind. I've probably got a little bit much on my brush there, so I'll just get some more out. Then we'll flip them upside down, because it's the easiest way to get at these little chest pieces. Just lightly at first. Start dry brushing against the edges of that detail and you'll see how we pick up a nice sharp line of highlight without having to spend forever getting a, a straight line with an ordinary brush. Now I recommend you go around and do this to all of the hard edges. You are going to find that in some areas, especially on his helmet is a really good example, there's that little curved area at the front where you're going to end up, let's just get a better look there, with some more color there than you might want. You see, it's hard to get a hard edge where there isn't one. But when we shade that, that's going to be dealt with. So let's go around now and pick out all of the hard edges with just a quick dry brush of Ethereum Blue. Now if you happen to have a Marine who's got one of these skull faces, say for example the Reavers, get you a little bit of Celestra Grey here and just paint in the whole face mask. You can get into the eyes here as well. And we'll just do that little skull section to prepare it for being white. Now it doesn't look like much at the moment. Like I said, there's a few patchy areas where you're not going to get a perfect straight line across, especially rounded edges. But for the most part, we've got a nice, you know, there is definition to the armor, which is what we really wanted. Any of these patchy areas we're going to deal with now. So I've got my big old shade brush and some Drakenhof Nightshade. There's nothing here stopping you from using something like Nuln Oil if you want a, a colder sort of appearance, but I quite like Drakenhof Nightshade because it's going to bring that blue together. So what we'll do now is just bucket this on and cover the whole miniature. Everywhere that we've painted, even the face, bloop, get in there now and we'll just go over the whole model, and give it about half an hour to dry and see what we come out with. Now you can see what a difference it makes. We've got our nice deep shading in the blue, as well as we've tied in all of those highlights. And suddenly they don't look so scratchy and awful anymore. Easy as that, guys. I know that a lot of people suggest doing a dry brush after a shade, but I think using it this way helps you tie it all in together. Now you could quite happily base them up, you know, leave that as the basis for the armor. But I like just a little bit more... I guess color. <laughs> so I've got here my Hoeth Blue, and I'm going to use just a medium layer brush. You might want to go down to something smaller if you, you know, you feel a bit more confident that way. I'm going to use this dry brush as a guide for where I can just put a little bit more of this blue. 
Hoeth blue is a bit bolder, and I think that suits the look I'm going for with the armor. You don't have to do this. If you wanted to, you could make this a little easier and just put a thin uh, blue glaze over the whole miniature. But just anywhere you want to sharpen things up a little bit more, just a little bit of Hoeth blue, and I don't think I'm going to put very much of this on at all. Now you can see, particularly along areas where we struggled to get the dry brush, like on his knee pads and along some of these areas on his legs, those make a good spot to just tidy up and add a little bit more sharpness and definition. And there we have our Crimson Fist. Like I said, there wasn't really a lot of extra uh, highlighting done. This is just enough to tidy up and get a bit more sharpness in some areas that we might have missed. So what I'm going to do now is let's get on to the red hand. And there are are some debates on <laughs> whether everybody should have two hands red if it should be a really bright red so i'm just going to show you the way i like to do it now personally to my mind the crimson fists all have the left hand red but then the right hand it depends on whether or not they're a veteran um, i've usually seen it that a veteran has two red hands but that's up to you again take a look at what the codex says and if you like how it looks go with that First off though, let's grab out some Mephiston Red. Now with just a little water in your paint, take care and paint away from anything that you've already finished because fixing up all the rest of the blue armor at this point can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So take your time if you need to be careful, you know, but just paint in that whole fist with red. Now it might take a couple of coats, but take your time, make sure you've got a nice sharp red. Now I've got here Caribou Crimson, but if you like a darker red, or you just want to use you know, something you've already got, uh, Agrax Earthshade works quite well over Mephiston Red as well. Uh, using my Caribou Crimson here, let's just add a little bit over the red. And you see it doesn't do a huge amount, but what it is going to do is help us shade between the knuckles and between any joints we might have missed. So just coat this on and let it dry. Now, once your shade is dried, you've got two options for highlighting. If you've gone with Agrax Earthshade, you're going to have a darker red. And I would say Evil Sun Scarlet is probably going to be where you want to go to. Uh, most people will probably want to use this anyway. Wild Rider Red is so bright, it's almost orange. Uh, I, I would say, <laughs> you know, you might call that orange anyway. But once it dries, it tones down a little bit. And I really like a nice sharp highlight on these uh, gauntlets. So what I'm going to use is Wild Rider Red, but just bear that one in mind if you like something a little more subtle. So now with just a little bit in my brush, I don't want very much of this at all to be perfectly honest because like I said it is quite bright, so let's just put a line down and make that L shape. There we go. I'll just do it along the back of his knuckles, a quick bip 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 Bip. And let's do a little. Now with those bits finished, that is, you know, a Crimson Fist done. But we've got so much more on him yet <laughs> to finish. So what I've got is Mournfang Brown. We're just going to gloss over a little bit and just paint in all of his equipment with this. You might find you need a second coat in some areas. And once your brown is finished, grab yourself your lead belcher and start filling in any metal areas. I like to do these before I do the black for two reasons. First of all, we're going to shade them, and we're going to shade both brown and metal in the same non oil. But when it comes to doing the black, uh, we can use that later as a tidy up stage. So if this, you know, metal stuff, whoops, goes anywhere it shouldn't, it doesn't matter too much. Just, as always, paint away from any armor panels that you've already done. So for example, on his weapon here, I'll get in close and drag away from his hand as much as possible. You'll find it's not always that easy, but whatever the case, get in now and let's do this whole mess of metal on him. Now with those metallic areas done, it's up to you if you do the black before or after the shade. I'm going to do it beforehand just because I like to tidy up. So what I'm going to do is fill in all of these little undersuit areas in black and then do his gun and anywhere else you know this is <laughs> this is the boring part honestly 
Now, once those are all dry, grab yourself something like a medium layer brush. You don't want to use your big old shade brush for most of this because you're going to be quite close to stuff you've already painted. But let's get in and shade everything at once. Now to highlight the leather, we're going to use Scrag Brown. And I think you can be fairly generous with this. This works best if you're getting near corners and any sort of long edges of these uh, pouches or what have you. You don't strictly have to do it, but I think, again, a little bit more contrast on a model like this helps sell the depth of that blue armor. So take your time and just do in your leather. Now grab yourself a slightly smaller brush and some skull white, sorry, white scar. Again, show my age. And let's just fill in around his teeth, jawbones, paint in the skull. All right, I recommend be a little sparing when you get to the corners so that it keeps that nice spooky blue in the recesses, but you can do as much of this as you like, just a bit of white. Now at the same time, I've also carefully dotted in just a little bit of white into his eye sockets because I'm gonna hit that with a red glaze just to bring those out, give them a cool glowing effect. Now from here, I'm actually gonna very quickly finish the rest of the details off camera. Um, I've highlighted silver and painted purity seals often enough <laughs> by now, but let's come back quickly once we've got all of that done and I'll pop his base on him at the same time so we can see how this all looks in context. Then with the last of those details finished off, our reaver is complete and Crimson Fists, easy as that. Really, the main thing to do is make sure that you're getting that dry brush first of all, because that's going to set sort of a guide for everything else you can do afterwards. And with the Drakenhof Nightshade over the top, you'll find it's so easy just to bring it all together and make it look that much smoother. So hopefully, guys, something there was useful to you. Uh, just one thing I want to point out, I actually split this decal. And uh, once I've, I've patched it up there with a little bit of, uh, what do you call it? Mephiston Red. I'm going to go back over with something else in a minute just to tidy that up properly. But just a quick note that, hey, these things do go wrong on occasion. <laughs> They're not too hard to fix. All right, just color match as best you can. And once he's on the table, you'll never see it. If you fancy, drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. And as always, I'm a little more active on Twitter. So feel free to drop by and say hi. I always love seeing what people are doing. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.